All right, welcome back. Um, I want to use this video as an opportunity to explain the difference between a definite sum and an indefinite sum, how those show up in sigma notation, and I also want to use this as an opportunity to review Euclid's method. So find the sum. We'll use this example as a good starting point. Find the sum. Well, I know that I need to plug in 1 first for k, and then add that to what I get when I plug in 2, and keep plugging in until I finally get to 12. All right, so our goal is to figure out what that sum is. Well, because each of the terms are um, being multiplied by the same base to get to the next one, I know that I can use uh, Euclid's method. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we know that we're going to get a definite, a definite number out as an answer here. All right, so this is a definite sum because this is going to equal a numerical value. So again, I know I'm going to multiply by 2. And if you're not sure what's going on here, again, revisit the, the video on Euclid's method. All right, and then we know that we're supposed to subtract s minus 2s is a negative 1s. 2 to the 1 minus 0 is 2 to the 1. And then over here, and then everything else uh, subtracts to 0. 0 minus 2 to the 13 gives me this. And then if I divide by negative 1, I know that s is equal to this. 2 to the 1 minus 2 to the 13 divided by negative 1, which if I wanted to, I could rewrite it like this. And so that gets me, I'm just going to put this in my calculator, gets me that. Okay, so this is a definite sum, and you're going to compare this example to the one on the next page. It's a definite sum because there's a number here, all right? So that means that we're starting with k equal to 1, and we're stopping at k equal to 12. That's going to cause this to be a finite sum of numbers that I can actually add up and get a numerical answer to. So compare that to the one on the next page. So this says, find a closed form, and there's a little typo there, it should say 4, for the indefinite sum. So in, it's an indefinite sum because I'm not adding up a finite number of numbers, I'm adding up um, n numbers where n is a variable. So I'm actually not going to get a number when I evaluate this. I'm going to get a formula. I'm going to get a formula that tells me um, tells me what the sum is if I want to add up the first n terms for the function 2 to the k. Okay? But the mechanics of plugging this in, or the mechanics of span, expanding sigma notation is the same. So again, as usual, I'm going to start by... Um, plugging in 1 for k, so it becomes 2 to the 1, plus 2 squared, plus 2 to the 3, plus 2 to the 4. And I'm going to keep going, and I guess the last one I want to plug in is 2 to the n, all right, which is not a definite number, it's just a, an expression. Now we can still apply Euclid's method here, and what will happen is we're not going to get a number, we're going to get an expression. Okay, so this using um, Euclid's method on indefinite sums is going to produce formulas, not numbers. All right, so watch what happens. So s is equal to, so multiplying by 2 again, I'm going to multiply by 2. 2s two equals, it's going to shift everything over, 2 squared plus 2 to the third plus 2 to the fourth plus 2 to the n, and if you multiply 2 to the n times 2, it becomes 2 to the n plus 1, right? So, doing this subtraction now, I get 1s minus 2s is negative 1s, and that equals 2 to the 1 minus, 
So everything else subtracts to 0. And I have 0 minus 2 to the n plus 1, which is so a minus 2 to the n plus 1. All right, and so dividing by negative 1, as we usually do, I get this. All right, and so this is a this is a formula. It's a closed form for this indefinite sum. K goes from one to n of two to the k. Now, what's nice about this is that for any n value, you know, let's say n is you know if n is a um, hundred. Well then, this tells me that I'm going to put an n in for a hundred, and uh, a hundred in for n rather. This tells me that this sum, I don't have to readily expand it all out since I know the closed form. It's going to be two to the well. I'm going to put a hundred in for the n, so it becomes a hundred plus one minus two to the one. All right, now that's a gargantuan number, and in fact, it's probably going to overload our calculator. But the point is, we now have a closed form uh, rule that's going to tell us the sum for any n value. So that's the power of indefinite sums. And we use Euclid's method to figure out formulas that help make future sums much uh, quicker.